I met Chris a few years ago while researching a documentary. He was violent and dangerous and charismatic. When I asked him about his life, he told me to fuck off. The next time I ran into him, he'd changed. He'd moved to the country, got married, and become a father. Oh, David, is your daddy in? He agreed to tell his story on the understanding right. that if he got hurt, if his family got hurt, then I would get hurt. This wasn't a threat, he said. In his world, that's just the way it works. Ow! This radio mic in here. Where? Just no, put it in your pocket here. Don't worry about it. Sorry about this. Okay. Thank you. Right. All right, go on in. Which one now? Can we start with some background yeah. stuff? So, like, age. What? You're forty. One. 41. 41, right. What's your date of birth? What do you want to know that for? Just ask a question. We just, we just told me what age. You're 41. Don't look at me like that. Come no, on. It's really, really privileged information, Leo. OK, I'm sorry. This, I mean, this sounds like a police interview here. I'm not... I'm, not, I'm just trying to establish, set the thing up and yeah, well, don't. see what... No, just fucking ask something else, all right? Can we try another...? Let's try again. Let's start again. Let's stop and start again. All right, go well. Um... Can I talk about your scar? You feel comfortable talking? Yeah, sure. How did you get your scar? Um, I was uh, with some girl in a pub. Some girl? Yeah, just some bird. So, second time I taken her out, and uh, I'm at the bar, and it's, I turn around, and this geezer's chatting her up. So I put my drinks down, I've gone over to him, I've gone, look, mate, you know, she's with me, we're together. If you ain't interested, leave it out. Think you're big enough? That's it, I've just done him. Just fucking done him. Just like, I think I was smacking him with a pint glass. Just on the floor, out cold, and I'm fucking hammering the cunt, just hammering him. All of a sudden, I'm just so fucking dizzy. I just come over like a fucking ragdoll. All right. And I look down, and it's summertime, so I'm wearing all beige and white. Look down, and everything's fucking claret. And I know it's mine, and it's just claret. And I look up, and it's this geezer whacking me. He's glassed me, and he's just fucking whacking me. Well, so I've looked at him, and he knows I'm not going down, and he's run off. So I got to the hospital, sort it out, whatever. The hunt's on. I, I've got to fucking find him, and no one knows who he is. And it's really fucking getting to me. A couple of months later, I'm seriously fucked off by now. We're driving down the street, and it's like five of us in the motor, and someone's come fucking whizzing out of the side road, nearly swiped the front of the car off. It's him. It's your man. It's the same bloke. And he ain't got a fucking clue. So we've gone straight across him, right? That's it. Just dragged him out of the car, just fucking opened him up like a can of beans. Hell. Standing knife. Just cut him. Just cut him and 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 cut him. Just fucking saw so many people around and got to go. Um, what is it? He's just ripped kind of shreds. His face? Yeah, his face, yeah. Come on. His hands as well, because, like, he's trying to protect himself. Like, mainly his face looks like a fucking jigsaw puzzle. Is this your plan? What? You, 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 you're going to mark him so you, you, he'll remember you forever. Is that your yeah, plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You were going to say something there. What, what? Go on, tell me. Uh. Well. I was going to say to you that I was... My plan was to stab him. I was going to stab the guy. Huh? So, usually... What I prefer to do is cut people, not stab them. Uh, but I think, since I've got him out in the middle of the road, it's broad daylight, I think that's why I've cut him, not stabbed him. Once you stab someone, there's a good chance he's going to die. Cut him, it's like stitches. That's it, end of. Why did you not want to tell me that? I, was, I, was, 
I thought, how can I fucking say that to you, you know? How can you fucking say that normally you cut someone, don't stab them? It's, it's like, you know? How can you say that? You know? What kind of person says that, thinks that? It's like, you can't fucking go around thinking you're gonna... You just can't go around stabbing and cutting people. It's, it's today's world to how things used to be for me. Cos we used to be, you could fucking say to people, you yeah, know, I'm gonna stab the cunt, or I'm gonna cut the cunt, whatever. Now it's just saying it, it's... Just hurts. Hurts? Hurts, yeah, it makes you think. Right. Just how... Pointless. No, it's ridiculous it all was. For no reason. I mean, no fucking reason, really. Just... Come on, let's go to work. We've got to go to work. I'd crossed the line with Chris. I'd asked for his trust and he'd given it. He thought he knew what he was getting into, but he didn't. Neither of us did. So where did you learn about violence? At home? Yeah, I definitely got taught. If you're having a fight, you're only having that fight to hurt someone. So, the person standing in front of you is not going to stop until you fucking hurt him, so you better hurt him. And pick up a brick, hit him. Is it your old man that's telling you? Yeah, I'm dead. Like, if it's a knife, pick up a knife, stab the cunt. You know, he's never get hurt. Another thing, we was taught, I mean, brought up, and I think this is actually a good thing. Anything you want to do to people, fair game, right? Anything, everything. You touch a woman, I will fucking hit you, you cunt. No, right, always, day one, never touch a girl violently. You cannot hurt a woman, which I totally agree with. But right, there are no circumstances in which it's all right to hurt a woman. So a bit older, 12, take the wheel. All right, all right, calm down. Take the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Thank you. A bit older, 12, 13, says, you can smoke, right, you can drink, take drugs, I will fucking kill you. 15, he finds a bit of puff in the room. Comes in and fucking smashes me to fuck, like, just out of blue, fucking, Cane to me, breaks my ribs, three or four my ribs, right, holds me by the neck, it's fucking right in my body, batters me. And then it's like, right, you fell down the stairs, you go to the hospital. That's it. Drugs. End on. What, what did your mother say? Mum didn't say nothing. Was she afraid of him? No, not at all. What? Look, he was a violent man, but not towards the family. Not a fucking, you know. It's just drugs was his big thing. Well, he never hit you before this time? This is the only time he hit me. Never, ever touched me. He wouldn't. Never touch the family. No, he fucking... He wouldn't even say boo to my mum. I mean, he would, literally wouldn't say boo to scare her. Whole time growing up, I don't think I ever, ever saw them argue. Never an argument between the parents. Being violent outside the house. Dad, yeah, he's a fucking raving lunatic, isn't he? Absolute fucking raving. I mean, junior school, I seen him smash the fuck out of the milkman on the front doorstep. I mean, smash the fuck out of him. I seen him do an insurance geezer, seen him do every fucking porter on the estate, six porters, everyone. I'm going to this, man, I was eight. Nine years old, I don't know. my mum's come home from uh, the butchers, like, crying her eyes out, I mean, fucking sobbing. And she began their donkey shoes, but this day, the geezer's taking the piss out of her or something, and I wound her up, and she's 
I'm stressed out, I can't remember where she's broken down. She walked home crying. My dad's grabbed me and dragged me down there. Walked in Saturday morning. It's fucking mobbed. All right, half of them live on this day. They all know my dad. He's walked to the front, just picked up a knife, bang, right through the cunt's hand. Right in the butcher's block, through his hand. He's like, show my wife some respect. Come on, we're going. Kind of screaming his head off there, and there's probably 20 customers standing around. And after he's like, um, yeah, I knew nothing would happen, because most of them cunts know what I'm like. If they know what you're like, you can fucking get away with anything. That's what he's preaching to me. What, boys? From an early age, Chris discovered he was good at fighting. It got him notice, it got him status, and he enjoyed the power it gave him. Yeah, uh, Morgan Maple Finance. Second floor, please. Sorry. Even though his life now was unrecognizable from those days, he still seemed very attached to his violent past. Had he really left it behind? Could he live without it? Fucking someone over, especially a fuck ass, there was nothing. Blatant violence, nothing. Huh? You see him blood, you see him guts, you see him people done with knives, people done with bats, people done with crowbars, people done with glasses, whatever. No, you don't think about it. Now, I can think about it. Are there incidents that you're saying on reflection weren't justified? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, pouring fucking. How much, how far, how much can I push you, Leo, you know? How much can I tell you? It's like... I think you should, you should... Pouring fucking petrol over a night watchman and threatening to set my light because he won't open a fucking drawer, it's got 2,000 pounds in it. 2,000 pounds. And I will burn that cunt, I will light him up like a fucking firework for two grand. What have I done to him? I imagine the psychological damage yourself. Someone pours petrol on you, it's going to light you up. Look, what if he's got kids? No? What have I done there or about with his relationship with his kid? What if he can't go to work? There's a stress and everything. I wish you could beat the fuck out of people. There's not a lot more you can do to threaten them. Pour petrol on him. So you beat them first? Well, you always beat them, yeah, try and get the key that way. If you can't get the fucking key then, what are you going to do? You've got to do something really fucking horrible. Open the fucking drawer. Have you got something I want? The thing I want don't even fucking belong to you. Why don't you give it to me? I've hurt you. I've fucking beat you. You still won't give it to me. What's your fucking problem? It's not just pure violence. It's like you've got to... You're fucking people's heads up. You've got to learn to fuck people's brains. How do you do that? Well, you've got to learn what to say to them, you know? I'm going to cut your fucking head off. They pull that massive knife. Fucking bang. You know what? Give them a couple of stitches. Go. I will cut your fucking head off. That's what I brought this fucking knife for. Mm -hmm. That boy gun sitting in a chair. A minute later, he was on the fucking table, hands tied, legs tied, clothes stripped off him. Huh? Why do you, why do you take his clothes off for? Fear factor. You know, you've got to scare him. You know, the quicker you scare him, the quicker they fucking give what you want. And you've got to scare him so much they think you're a fucking lunatic standing on the table, fucking piss on you, dirty cunt, fucking anything. You want to get in there, get what you need, get the fuck out again, as quick as you can. It's your job. It's your job of work. I think the petrol incident really got inside you, really bothered you. Yeah. Yeah. Lost sleepless nights over there, yeah. 
I can shock myself. I'd be surprised myself. <clears throat> I would have done it. If those fucking keys hadn't turned up, I would have fucking done it. I would have burnt the cunt. I would have lit it. No problem. Did I change things? Uh, yeah. I mean, certain people start coming at you all of a sudden. Can you do them kinds of things all the time? No, I couldn't. I mean, I, I couldn't douse people in petrol on a regular basis, no. I fucking glass people. I've cut people, I've battered the fuck out of people, I've used every implement on people. I'm not going to start torturing people. If you want to earn big money, that's what you've got to fucking, these kind of things are what you've got to do. You know, you want big money, serious money, and it's easy fucking work. Getting butterflies in my fucking stomach. I don't like it. Are you talking about now? Yeah. Yeah, getting these really uncontrollable, like, like fucking butterflies, like, um, it's like fear, you know, like, but fear of getting found out or confronting my crimes to a judge, and I think it's like fear. So I feel like I've done it, you know, I, it's like I feel. I fear poor cunts on the road who suffer. You know? Someone's cut you up, and they're on the floor, and you're beating fuck out of them. I feel myself losing control, you know, and I fucking. I, I f it's not a fear of losing control, it's like I know what I'm like, I fucking lose control. And I think I'm just gonna fucking beat someone. If there's an object near, I'm gonna fucking use it on the cunt. You know? And I can't. It scares me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I fear so much for my son. Oh, such fear. Going out. Accidentally bumming into someone like me. The more Chris told me about his crimes, the more complicit I felt. I was horrified by what he had done, but I was also drawn closer to him. We were locked into something that was becoming increasingly murky and disturbing. He didn't get paid for these interviews. Chris spoke to me because he needed to talk to someone. I just happened to be there at the right time, or wrong time. His wife, Sophie, refused to let him talk about his past. I have this ostrich in the sand approach. I, mean, I just feel better that way. I feel less hurt that way. I don't really care if it's honest or not, because I think honesty is overrated, really. I think people are frightened by honesty, real honesty. I think, you know, they just can't deal with it. Well, Chris is different from me in that way. He's complete honesty, whatever. But he's... You know, prepared to take the hurt. He will, and he will take it, you know, head on. Whereas I, I, I can't do that. Why not? It just hurts, really. I prefer to walk about in oblivion, in my own little cloud of happiness. So you don't know much about Chris's past, or you don't want to know? No, I don't want to know. When we first met, he came across as such an open, sweet, loving person. And, and then, you know, gradually I found out that there's a completely different layer underneath, like, totally opposite, really. You know, people watching this, they might not put you two together, would they? No, <laughs> probably not. No, not at all. So well, why are you two together? Well, because we fell in love with each other. I mean, you know, he's... We have a really good laugh together, and he's really good fun, and we have the same sense of humour, and... And we've got David now. Has he ever been violent towards you? Once, when we first met. I was out for the night, and I came home, and I turned on the light. He was in bed, and he just jumped up and started screaming at me, like, really 
violently screaming at me, you know. Don't turn the fucking light off, he said. And like, you see this and see that. And it was, it's like, absolutely lost it, like, totally lost it. I told him I just wasn't going to put up with any kind of that behaviour. I told him nobody, nobody speaks to me like that, especially not in my own house. I'm not having it. If you're going to behave like that, you behave like that outside, not with me or anywhere near me. How did he react? Oh, he was, you know, very ashamed. Yes, he was... I mean, he said he was sorry and we talked about it and... He's never, ever spoken to me like that again. Ever, in all the years we've been together, he's never, ever done it to me again. It's like he learned a boundary and he hasn't crossed it. I can see that he can be a good person. Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. <laughs> You just don't tell any fuck of your business. That's the basic thing, is you don't fucking let anyone know nothing about you. Like, at work, I don't even know I've got a fucking kid. Really? They know nothing about me at all. If people know nothing about you, they can't fucking go shut up. You don't tell anyone fucking anything. This grassing thing is a big issue, isn't it? <laughs> major, major. Mate, that's a big one from day one. You don't fucking grass. You just do not fucking grass. That's it. Have you had anyone ever grass on you? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. Got out of it. I got out of it, right? If you get out of it, you... I cut a woman. Stop myself going to prison. The old man was gonna... I've been out. Just gonna get a court. He asked me out. I couldn't get to him. He was inside. It's my last option. What, his daughter, or wife, wife, sister? Yeah. I didn't want to go to prison. So that was done. How did you cut him? Just cross face with a standing knife. I'm gonna promise that next time I'll kill you. I know you got told as well. Next time I'll kill his wife. Go out of court, mention my name, kill your wife. How do you feel about that now? Oh, I can't. Like I can't. I like still. And I know what the colour of cheeks was. Everything I, how she looked. What you knew how she looked when you cut her. Yeah, when I was doing it. What in her I eyes? Yeah, I smell everything. I, color of face, complexion, rosy complexion, pink, like spotless complexion. Good-looking girl. I've known him six years. You've known her for six years? Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, friendly. Knocking about. Not a problem. Really? But, yeah. It's yeah. everything's groovy, you know, but then a uh, old man is going to grasp me up, he's going to go to court, mention my name. You've got some cunt. Wants to get up your ass, wants to fuck her. You're 18, 19 years old in a man's prison. Some cunt wants to fuck you, and then this other prick is gonna fucking grass you up, put you back in there. You're not fucking. You're not gonna fucking go back inside. Once you've been inside, you ain't gonna fucking go back there. It's a woman, right? It's your freedom. You try getting a fucking implement in a man's prison. It's fucking hard to protect yourself in there. It's fucking hard. 
I wasn't going back. I, me or her, I wouldn't go back inside. I can't go to the toilet there. When you, um... We're moving, um... There's no nice way to, uh, explain the situation. Um... Totally, f physically, um... Remove someone's eye completely, I'll detach it. Uh, <clears throat> no, it's. Someone's going to seriously shaft you. Right, they're going to shaft you. And That's what you did. No two ways about it. That's what they're going to do. You just become like them, become a fucking animal. That's what you did. Don't... You, you've... You've got no choice. No, you've got no choice. You can't hurt the cunt. Is this in prison you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to kneel down and take the shaft in. I'm not going to fucking do it. I'm... Never, ever in my life, still never have heard someone scream. So fucking horrifying, you know. Who done wrong, huh? I'm not going to accept that, I'm not. What, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's, it's, be somewhere fucking studying, having a fucking education, no? And there's some fucking old time gonna fuck you up the ass. Just a fucking kid, for fuck's sake. Is this the first time you, you, you've been, you were scared? In the shower. Yes. It's the only time in my life I've ever been just in a situation where I couldn't control. Mm. It's like if you fall over, you just, you just keep sleeping over and it just cunts just fucking right on you. You know, you're fucking struggling, you slip away and fuck, he's on you again, you know? And you, you, you can fucking kick him, punch him, Fucking headbutt him, bite him. It's nothing. It's nothing to him. I feel his prick on on me arms and over my legs and chest and all around my fucking ass. I'm punching him and punching him and punching him and it's just fucking nothing. If he fucking wants me, he's gonna fucking have me. I'm on that strength, you know. I'm just punching and punching and punching. It's like fucking nothing to him. It's just completely running that physical strength. Just just fucking drain. And I've punched him and I've just gone in, just got my fingers in, right behind the cunt, just fucking pulled it out. It's in my fucking hand, you know what I mean? It's in my hand. Oh. You look up, you see what you've done. It's like a fucking zombie movie. It's like watching a fucking shit. Fucking zombie movie, it's just a big hole in his head. You know, it's just a fucking socket staring at you. What happened? What? what, what? Afterwards, I mean, did, you, did you get into trouble? Did you do more time? No, 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 no. He didn't press charges. I don't think I could have stood up. Anyway, cool, and, you know, I'd have had to counteract the charges, and I don't think I could have. 
Um, I'd done it at the time. Well, why did he not press charges? It's prison life. He's just going to get done. He knows he's going to get done twice. Once for being gay and once for grassing me. So how long did you do then? Uh, nine of 18. What, nine? Nine months, nine. yeah. <laughs> so after that time, you came out and... What about the guy who brought the charges against you? Who put you in there? Oh... It, uh... Also, like father, like son, I don't really associate that close with my father. The association's there. Isn't it? Exactly the same as what my dad done. He's in a wheelchair for life now. Been out about seven hours, got in a transit van, went over to his house, waited outside, comes out, fucking rammed him 40 miles an hour right into his fucking back wall, just fucking pinned him there. Mm. Just left him pinned to the wall. He's fucking bombed about South London the wheelchair now. Sh fuck, mate, broke his back. Police must have come looking to you for that one. Yeah, Sh yeah. And what happened? It's in the pub all day celebrating getting out of prison. It's 50, 60 people said I was getting pissed with them. You could have killed them. I wasn't fast either way. Has anyone ever died as a result of anything you've done? Or been involved with? I don't want to go there, mate. I don't want to fucking go there. All right. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't really want to know whether Chris had been involved in anyone's death. I couldn't bear to think about all the pain and suffering he had caused. But he knew I'd ask again, and I knew he'd tell me. We're having a fight, and I've done something with a cobra. Not just once, right? Someone's getting really fucked up big time with this cobra. And then we found out that someone has been Battered to death at the same um, place, but have had a little um, disturbance, right? I'm not the only person hitting this person. The other person hit this person is just hitting him, and I've got a crowbar. What, the other person's physically hitting him? Yeah, jumping on him, you know, kicking him, punching him, everything. How did the incident happen? We're in a car, five of us in a car, and Back in those days, we were fucking going on a Friday, Saturday night, boots full of implements, because we are fucking people up all over the place, and you don't know who you're going to bump into, so you don't want to be um, in a situation without something to back yourself up. So we've turned around this corner, and there's eight blokes crossing the road, and we've pulled up all of a sudden, right? So it's fucking giving us the eye, staring at us as we walk by, and we're staring at them. And the last fucking prick, they almost fucking come over him if he's, they want it, they don't want it. He's just some muggy cunt who's fucking pissed. He's kicked the car. He's kicked the car. All four doors are flown open, boots aren't done. That's it. Chaos. Now these cunts are going to get done, they're going to get done fucking bad. The picture I've got in my mind is this guy lying on the ground. With a smile on his face, right? He's completely gone. He's got a massive smile, like, really, it's like, I'm really, really smiling. At that time, what, what were your private thoughts? Oh, shit, I'm going to prison. No, oh, shit, someone's died? No. No. Now, yeah, now. I've either taken part or...
have ever taken part or have killed someone? Um, she's not a big thing to know about yourself. It's like the mothers, you know, fathers, or sisters, brother, wife or girlfriend or whatever. Uh, what fucking pain I put them through for no reason, you know? Right. Like, that's what does it, it was a nothing fucking incident. Get a fucking car. And now there's a person who's fucking vanished. I've made a person vanish. Since we last spoke, Chris stopped taking my calls and didn't respond to my messages. I knew we'd gone too far. I knew far too much. A month later, I managed to get through to him. He agreed to meet and talk about what happened. I've been sick. I'm physically sick. Memories have made me physically sick. Really in a situation, you know, put forward by yourself. And then you're gone. All right, you take me there to, to an area where I've not been for fucking decades. It's not a year or two, it's decades. And then it's like, thanks Chris, see you later. I can't stop thinking about it. I'll go even further when you've gone. So I can't stop that air then, you know. And then I'm by myself, start driving. Oh, and it all comes back, it's just everything. It's my head's bombarded with it. Heart starts to race and um, stomach goes. <clears throat> just a shot. Fucking horror. All the images, screams. I cry and I cried constantly for more than a day. What are you thinking when I'm ringing for you, leaving messages? Sometimes I'm thinking not very nice things about you. Sometimes I think what a nice bloke you are. You angry with me? I'm fucking angry at everyone. That's what Sophie says. Thinking about my f feelings, I'm a lot fucking worse since I started talking to you. Know that. A lot fucking worse. I've changed so much in ten years. I mean, in ten years I've changed so fucking much. Well. I don't know how you dress it up, say it was a different person, but it's still, still me, at the end of the day. Well, I've come to thinking 99% my dad made me the way I am, but still, I've got to take responsibility, you know, I'm an adult. It's me, I've done, I've done these, all these things. I'll take a break. Right. I mean, spinning, I can't. I've got like fucking 20, 30, 40 things running around my head and. and not fucking nice things, I tell you. You're feeling like this once a day, once a month? Every time I fucking talk to you. I've got butterflies now. Do you think talking about these things is helping you? No, I don't. I don't. I fucking. I did. Yeah, first couple of times now, I fucking don't. I want to apologise to every single person for everything I've done, all the things that haunt me. I want to. You know, you, I don't think there's anything you can do on the victim's behalf. And I don't think even an apology is going to take it away. I don't think even money's going to take it away. I don't think there's anything I can do or say to that person that's going to make that person feel better. What, everyone you've hurt? 
Well, not, no, not everyone, not the fucking people who's up for it. But all the people who just mind their own business, and I'd fuck them up just because I'm in the wrong fucking mood or whatever. I'd fuck them up for life. Yeah, for no reason. Does, it, would this, does this include the guy who you put in a wheelchair? That's an odd one. I mean, yeah, he's still suffering today. My suffering was 10 minutes in a shower. I still suffer because of that 10 minutes. That 10 minutes really fucking altered what I did to people when I come out. Really affected it. I, there was no fucking limits then. I was 20, 30, 100 times worse. I was never going to be that fucking vulnerable again. I'd fucking do you before you look at me. I'd fucking... You know, you're not going to fucking get up, mate. I'm not going to have someone fucking come on top of me again. No, I just... Oh, oh. It's too intense. It's too fucking intense. It's just a pain. It's just, um... I can't fucking get away from it. Pain's not getting better. It's getting worse. It's getting fucking worse, you know, and I can't get away from it. Like, anywhere I fucking go, I've got, I've got a pub, I've got to walk out. People start talking, I've just got to get away. Remember when you used to jump on, um, like, bounce about? You remember when we called you Pogo? Pogo? Yeah, Pogo. I was, you used to, like, something would go off, and I'd just fucking jump up and down, some cunt's head. What do you mean, jump up and down? I well, just fucking, that, just fucking jump up and down, just, you know. Just fucking jump on someone's head. You know what fucking jumping is, just jump on, jump off, jump on, jump off, both fucking feet. Just slam into the cunt. Shouldn't have fucked me, mate. That's your fucking problem, isn't it? Just jump on some cunt's head. You could have crushed his skull. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Did that happen? Who knows? Right, every time I've done it, and I've done it regularly, always unconscious will never see. Might be a way to start with, but a couple of fucking jumps on someone's head, they're fucking out, mate. They are totaled. You just fuck them. You have fucked them. This has just come out of you talking about pain. That's fucking... It's really fucking annoying, that. That's what I don't like. Just got excited, just talking about it. I clicked, that's what Sophie calls it. Clicked. So I, 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 I smile, get excited when I talk about having a fight. Just not explaining jumping on someone's f fucking head. I don't know. I don't know if, if I'm talking about these things is because I'm, I'm going back there, you know, like nothing's changed. If I'm, just completely back into it because we're talking about it, or because really, end of the day, I fucking like it. You know, I fucking enjoy violence. It's a vicious circle, isn't it? Your parents supported you, right? Your parents have fucking wanted you to get on, they wanted you to. Just like get a job and everything. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Chris. It's just a waste. I still got a really, really big problem with why they let me get away with it. My mum and dad. Why they fucking let me get away with it? Thirteen years old. Going out for the weekend. See you Monday. Be back after school. Fucking 13 years old. See you later, mate. Be careful. Your mum and dad. Be fucking careful. Who fucking. What's going on? No, it's fucking not. It's 
done a fucking good job, my dad. Uh, I'm an horrible, arrogant, violent cunt. He's done his job well. He's turned it just how he wanted. What's he fucking doing? Why didn't someone push me some other way, you know? Like most kids, through educational striving to do something with your life. What I'm striving for is to be harder and harder. Commit more and more crime. It's exactly what you wanted. So I don't understand why. Really, really don't understand why. Because it goes against, up to this point in my life, everything I've ever gone against. Should we punish for it? I really feel that. I think the only way to stop it all is to be punished um, for what I've done.